Mona. Hi, I'm Nishi Rose. And I'm Sophie Hanna, and I want to welcome you to episode 82 of Ethnically Speaking, the show where we discuss everything affecting the UK's highly melanated communities, from current affairs to pop culture and everything in between. Now, you know we always keep it 100, and today we're talking about messing around with makeup. So one woman recently shared her jaw-dropping transformation on TikTok, showing herself before and after her daily application of makeup and false teeth. Let me tell you a little bit more. So a woman, 36 year old Alicia, lost her teeth during a difficult pregnancy and now and now wears dentures, but people criticize her dramatic before and after with makeup saying that it was catfishing, witchcraft and false advertising. Now while playing around with makeup can be fun, is it misleading to have a dramatic before and after with your look due to that makeup? And can someone wear too much makeup up, or is it really down to personal choice? When it comes to catfishing, I don't understand why it only seems to be, or the majority seems to be catered towards women. Like men can catfish too, you know. It, the whole question of like, is it too much to, or is it misleading someone when you wear makeup? Okay, well, I think it's misleading on a dating app when you're five foot eight and you're saying that really you're six foot one, which I would know because apparently I'm the average height for a man, okay? So also, if you're talking about like um, physique, for example, if you go to the gym, and I use this all the time, if you're someone who goes to the gym and you like a very active lifestyle, that's not naturally your physique. If you stopped going to the gym, you would lose that ripped core, right? Is that misleading? I just feel like the mentality that people have towards makeup, I'm like, can you get your head out of your ass? People can wear what they want. If you go back to this TikTok lady, right? She looks amazing. She looks gorgeous. Yes, it is a transformation. And I'm not saying it because we're discussing it. I do think she looked beautiful before. I like the color of her hair. I like her facial features. I even like her personality, the way that she's doing her makeup. She's dancing around. She seems like a vibe. She's grinning when she's got no teeth in. She doesn't look like someone who's trying to pull the wool over someone's eyes. And she said herself, she doesn't lie about her fake teeth. She speaks about it. In my opinion, isn't catfishing where you purposefully try to hide something from someone in hopes that they never see it and then later on you get caught out she hasn't been caught out she made the video of herself it's not to say this is the picture that she shows of herself and then someone caught her out i don't know iceland and was like is that the same woman she wasn't caught out she just did it herself yeah i i feel i feel exactly the same way i don't understand, i don't know why again i think it's like a, such a gendered thing um, and it's gendered also because when women obviously do wear makeup or change their appearance or try and look more attractive, because everybody, no one's saying that she doesn't look more attractive with her fake teeth and her makeup, right? And so we all agree on what this idea of female attractiveness is. And so the question then is, why do we all agree on this same ideal? And what are the issues, what are the various factors that have created this idea in our minds that this is attractive, this toothless lady, versus, uh, you know, somebody with gleaming teeth and perfect makeup. And the fact is, if we live in a society that does uphold these values, which we have no real control over, um, are you therefore meant to just kind of languish as you as you are kind of naturally and not, and not participate in that, but then it holds you back in so many other ways, whether it's in terms of job inequality, the way people respond to you on the street or even making friends. So I think that, we should really be questioning as well why why we why we all participate in those beauty ideals and uphold those standards and yet love to hate the women who as you're sort of saying as well who actually you know have a force to change themselves or transform them transform themselves in order to feel valuable or appreciated guys I, oh man Ah, <sighs> okay. So I think it is misleading. <laughs> like, not for her. Okay, let me, let me, let me, <laughs> let me wind it back. I'm not talking about Alicia in this. I think what she can do with makeup is fantastic. Makeup within itself is artistry. These people are artists. Like, I love to get my makeup done by a professional makeup artist at a nice little special occasion. I do. I love it. <laughs> Her situation is kind of different and I think she gets a rough 
ride Alicia the woman because if you don't have teeth, it it dramatically changes the, the shape of your face. So it was always going to be a dramatic transformation because she's gone, like your, your face will be like sucked in to a certain extent because your lips rest on your teeth. Like my sister-in-law is a dentist and she was saying when people get braces, their top lip will drop because if your teeth are protruding, your lip has now formed over the top of the lip. No, your teeth have fallen. <laughs> your lip has formed over the top of the teeth. And she says, when you get braces and they become, they go back in and they become straighter, your lip will naturally drop because it, it was resting in a certain place. So her dramatic transformation was always going to be, if she had teeth, I don't think it would have looked probably as dramatic. And I love that she owns it. And she has, she lost her children on her first, she lost her teeth on her first child. She now has four and she's married. Alicia's doing fine out here, people. In terms of the makeup, I think it can be misleading. If you're gonna see someone who looks completely different to how they look in their natural state, to then looking like a different human being. And I'm not talking about Alicia, I think you can, you can see, but there are some people, come on guys, we have seen those Instagram videos where you're literally like, that is her, the, either their mother or their uncle or their cousin, but that is not the same person. And I don't know if I think that that is, I would ask the question that Nushi asks is, what is that based on? Where does it come from? And I think it comes from a sense of saying that women just aren't enough as they are in their natural state. And this is obviously not me harping on about women. Guys, I have had four different wigs on this show, different lipsticks, various different things. This is me not being against women playing around and transforming, but looking like, like looking like a completely different person, for me, that's that's on another level. And I, I genuinely believe when people, and I'm talking about people who wear makeup like drag queens, and that is the look that's in now. Let's be honest, the heavy contouring, this was something that was originated by drag queens. When we start to see that, I feel like it's playing on the insecurities of women. And unfortunately, we're buying into it. I don't agree to a certain extent, you know, obviously some people do wear makeup because they want to hide like a pimple here or they've got freckles and they don't want to take it away. They've got bags. Yeah, of course. But I personally, and this is coming from someone who's worked on about three, four makeup counters. I've done London Fashion Week. I don't actually think I've seen someone who looks that different when they've taken their makeup off. Unless we're talking about stage theatre makeup. I haven't seen it. I'm not going to lie to you. And what you've seen it on social media. Come on, I'm yeah, talking about social would, media. No, that's true. But what <laughs> I was going to say about social media is do not underestimate the power of makeup and the power of filters and editing and face tune. They're two different things. Makeup can only go so far. I've seen some Korean trends where they like change the shape of their face and they'll put like the elastic bands on. You leave makeup out of that because that ain't makeup. That's got to do with prosthetics and stuff now. That's actually not the makeup. I think that makeup right now. We're in a spell where people feel a lot more comfortable in themselves to be eccentric, to express themselves, to wear like cobalt blue eyeliner because that's just what they want to wear that day. I wouldn't necessarily say they're wearing it because they're not comfortable in who they are. They just see it as another form of expression. And now it's acceptable. And now, yeah, it's acceptable. It's trendy. I think we are a very fashion conscious society. And moving forward, everything encompasses fashion. You've got hair, makeup clothes it, it, so much comes underneath that umbrella and I think makeup does as well and I think if you saw somebody who was very well dressed you wouldn't say that that person is catfishing because the way that their fashion sense is is above their pay grade so their fashion doesn't reflect their bank account you wouldn't look at it in that way so I don't know why makeup gets such a bad rep and this is coming from someone who used to wear makeup 24 7 all the time to someone who doesn't wear makeup at all anymore and also, I want to say, makeup sits differently on different people's skin. I know I've applied it on different people. You could put a drop on someone and it looks like they've got a whole face of makeup. You could put 10 layers on someone else and it looks like they've got nothing. What do people mean when they talk about natural makeup? When you see these celebrities and they say, this Kim Kardashian effortless bronze goddess makeup look, do you know what effortless means to them? And some men will be like, yeah, I like her makeup because what they establish as dramatic is bright colours. If they see a red lipstick, oh, that's dramatic. But she might not have any foundation on. She might not have any mascara. She might have got her eyebrows done. 
Whereas the picture that you're looking at that you like that looks natural, she's got a full face of makeup, concealer, contour, bronzer, liquid highlight, you name it. But because it doesn't look obvious because there's no bright, you're going to say that that's natural makeup. You're misinformed, miseducated, and you're promoting something that's incorrect. Wait, Mona, I'm kind of interested. Why did you go from being from wearing makeup all the time to not just because what, what was the reason for that? So when I worked on makeup counters, makeup was your uniform. You had to wear the makeup because how could you sell a product that you didn't necessarily wear yourself? It kind of goes against the brand. I don't really like wearing makeup. I don't have anything against it. Like sometimes I'll get rid of it and I'll be like, oh, there she is. Hey, girl. And I'm like, you know, I'm feeling myself. But generally, like I have allergies. I've got quite sensitive skin. I'm so busy. I'm doing this all the time. I don't really have the time to worry. Oh, my God, have I just smudged my eyeliner? I just don't care for it. And I've never been like that. Even when I was on makeup counters, I'd work there with no makeup on my face. And it was only when I was told, look, the policy is the makeup is part of your uniform. It's like you being a police officer and not really wearing, I don't know, like your high-vis and your walkie-talkie. I don't know what they wear, but that's just how they view it. So it's not to say that I had a love for makeup and then, you know, I turned really naturalistic and I wanted to be like power to the girls, Alicia Keys, and then I stopped wearing it. No, I was never really here for makeup. I just wore it because... I liked applying makeup on people, not necessarily myself, but I just had to because of the job. Do you know what? Maybe I should revise my statement. I don't think people, when people talk about dramatic transformations, I'm not talking about bright colours. I'm talking about the type of makeup that's in there, like heavy contouring, which is used to change the features of your face. A lot of people want to slim out the nose or they want to do something to make their lips look bigger. Some of this for me is just very problematic, especially when I see a lot of black women in the public eye who will have a contouring to make their nose look smaller. And for me, tr someone is trying to achieve Eurocentric looks, something that is much more acceptable um, in mainstream Western media um, or now big lips are in. Um, <laughs> I mean, we've always had them as a, well, not every black person. I've always, my husband says I have big lips. I don't think that they're big, but I think they just suit my face. But if they're big, I don't have an issue with that. But now big lips are in and now people are using, trying to do that look. For me, those sort of things, when you're trying to take on the look maybe of other cultures or trying to make yourself more look more like an other, another culture, for me, that, that all becomes very problematic because I think it's like, where is this coming from? So for me, it's not about bright colored makeup, do the damn thing. But I'm talking about people that look dramatically different. So at my wedding, I remember my makeup artist was just like, do you want me to do contour? And I was just like the bare minimum. Not I was just like, I don't want to look like a different person. I want to look in the mirror and look like myself. Like I really want to look like myself. Where you see some people, honestly, I have seen people that I know get married and they look like a different person on their wedding day. And wow. I remember one of the makeup artists that came along did my sister's makeup. And it, oh, they did so much contouring. My sister didn't really look like herself. She didn't like it, but there was nothing we could do at that point. Whereas I had another friend who was just like, my makeup was too natural. And she was just like, I would have preferred to have the other makeup artist who did it really heavy with a lot of contouring. So I think some of it really is down to personal preference. But I think when I was reading this article talking about people saying, you know, when I wear makeup, I just feel more human. You know what? And something that you said, and she was like, you know, why should we have to languish languish in kind of like our natural state. And I'm just like, the fact that we associate looking human with having makeup on or the, or the fact that we talk about languishing in our natural given state is where I feel like we have been told that this makeup means more than it actually does. That it means something about who we are and that attractiveness is based on the things that we put on and the things that we wear and the way that we look. And I think it really detracts from women just being worthy just because, just because we are. And I think that is not what we are told when we're told about makeup. I, I, I just don't, I don't believe it. And I think it's a constant battle for us to have to wear something and be like, this doesn't define me and this doesn't make me who I am. And it doesn't make me more attractive. Like, <laughs> let me stop. <laughs> I sit on the fence because I, I do understand what you're saying, but I just feel that we've evolved a lot from that very, I want to say primitive way of thinking that women feel that they need to wear makeup to be confident or feel confident. 
That's not speaking on the whole of women who wear makeup. And let me just put it out there. It is not just women that wear makeup. Men wear makeup. Anybody who wants to wear makeup can wear makeup, right? Mm -hmm. I don't feel that people nowadays, I don't think that that people only wear makeup to make themselves feel good. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, it is a feel-good feeling and you enjoy it. But even when it comes to what you're saying about contouring, right, and making their noses slimmer, when I look at YouTube gurus and YouTube videos, I see everyone contouring their nose. I, even if you have a thin nose anyway, I just see it as one of the makeup steps that people do. It's like people putting concealer underneath their eyes to have a brighter eye, even when they've got no bags. Essentially, concealer was t- created to replicate underneath the eye and make it look a bit brighter. People did it because they just liked that wow factor. I don't think that it is as malicious as it used to be where you hear talks of Naomi and Iman, where there was no colour for them and they had to make it up on themselves. Makeup has progressed fantastically, right? And I don't think that it's fair for people to kind of lash onto these archaic views and be like, well, I think that is this. And I'm not saying that's what any of us are saying. I'm just saying there seems to be this sort of stigma that goes hand in hand. It is an artistry and it is a skill. And I think some people, the way that they talk about it, they even undermine it. If somebody's good at makeup, that's a skill. It's an art. It's like to be able to draw, to be able to paint. The human canvas is what you're doing that on. It's a skill. I don't think it should be diminished with insecurities because some people have no problem wearing a natural makeup. You have. When I used to work at MAC, we used to say, you have a wardrobe of foundations. Like on a Monday, you might want to have a matte finish. On a Tuesday, you might want to have a satin finish. On a Wednesday, you might want to have a natural glow. And it's true. Different days, you feel like different people, I'm sure... Maybe, Sophie, you might feel like you want to be a bit more room and you have like your hair a bit more voluminous and you feel that. And the next day you might want to go for like a shortcut. It's having that accessibility to change up your look and not be held down to one look if that's what you like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Nushi, what do you have to say, girl? What do you have to say? <laughs> you know, I like... I like I I've, I've always admired people who are re- who are amazing at makeup. So when I see I've seen so many of these transformation videos, um, I feel like it's a great way to spend an evening. Genuinely, like I love watching them. I find them, I just find them amazing. Like you know, the actual skill, like Mona is saying, that's involved in these in these looks and forget taking the prosthetics ones out like outside. But I think is amazing, and actually it shouldn't be undermined. But I also think that's not necessarily what you're saying Sophie I think you know you're speaking to maybe the fact that makeup historically has always like grown or kind of built itself on built its empires initially on female insecurity and so I'm very torn because I do think that makeup now is goes hand in hand with the kind of more general um, kind of I guess sense of freedom that has come with in the last 10, 15 years that the internet has fueled and kind of supported and allowed people to take pride in, as you say, like being different identities on different days of the week. But at the same time, I also was reflecting on, on myself and um, during this conversation. And I was just thinking, you know, first of all, I'm terrible at makeup, but there's been times when I'm out, um, like say if I was going clubbing before the clubs got closed and before I turned 25, many years ago but you know but, you know different parties or whatever I would always experiment with different looks so crazy colors like crazy lipstick colors ridiculous outfits all this kind of thing if I'm going out and I never had a problem with it however so one of my ex-boyfriends um I used to go to I used to stay at his house basically every single evening and um he lived in London Bridge and obviously there's like a big station at London Bridge and I was so embarrassed about him ever seeing me, even though obviously he saw me all the time in different states. But I was so anxious that one of these days I'd get to his apartment and he'd be like, oh, my gosh, like you look horrendous today. Um, but I would spend half an hour every single evening after work. He didn't even work with this man. I don't know why I was worried about this. Anyway. And I would just spend half an hour queuing to get into the, like, the ladies' toilet. I would put on so much concealer, foundation, highlighter, I'd contour, everything. And by the time I finally would reach his apartment, my face was so intensely sweaty from all these different layers of crap that like, I'd covered my face in. And also without any like artisanal skill. 
Um, you know, and like this pressure though, I would much rather have done that every single day, being super uncomfortable, always late, always queuing for this, as I say, public toilet to do this in, just to feel vaguely like comfortable in seeing this guy so that he would like, you know, to keep the kind of passion alive or whatever, um, rather than just being as I normally would, either experimenting or without makeup. And so I do kind of see it from, from both sides because the truth is, the few times where, not a few times, but whenever he did kind of see me not like super glamorous, um, he would he would be insanely, not insanely, but he would be critical of my appearance or think I was exhausted or tired or um, had had a bad day at work. And actually like, I just, you know, the toilets at London Bridge Station were closed that day. So I do kind of see it from, from both sides. But I think I do agree mostly with Mona now that, you know, people are using makeup as a way, as a, for, as a form of positive self-expression rather than bowing to the pressures of the male gaze. Going off a couple of things that you said, Nishi, one part of me actually feels a bit sad when you noted that, you know, historically makeup has been founded off the insecurities of women. I'm just like, yeah, but don't, do you not feel, and this is to the both of you, that makeup has expanded and adapted and it become so much more inclusive like if we look at makeup trends there's a lot of things that have stemmed off being more natural we've got bb creams now which we never had before you've got like very sheer foundation you've got foundations that is called like replica of skin you've got so many things that literally are not that backstage makeup that you think of and also again it's about the knowledge because when you think about brands that are absolutely killing it like um, I don't know, let's say Huda Beauty, Max and OG, that's always been around. Mac is backstage makeup. Mac is made for artists. Even though um, anyone has access to it, Mac is made for artists. It's for pro artists who know what they're doing. Mac isn't really like an everyday makeup foundation type of thing. People have now used it for that. Yes, that's true. But at the end of the day, that's what it was used for. If people were able to get their hands on it and kind of like apply it how they wanted to, that's down to their own discretion. And looking at how makeup has transgressed and it's been so inclusive for men, transgender, children, um, age inclusive for people who feel like I get so many ladies who would say to me, I don't want to look like Martin dressed as lamb. It's inclusive for everyone. I feel like it's really created a space where it's stepped away from being based on the insecurity of women and more so just about doing whatever the fuck you want to do and not have people tell if you wear too much makeup it's a problem if you don't wear makeup it's a problem it just seems to be a problem across the board and I just wanted to say you see the stance that Alicia Keys made where she stopped wearing makeup right that was so powerful for women everywhere like oh my gosh she stopped wearing makeup she's on the red carpet you know if she can do it I can do it Alicia Keys has had surgery that's number one Alicia Keys has access to, the, to amazing doctors, amazing, you know, estheticians and all that stuff. What she has done is replicated makeup, but passed it off as natural. She's a gorgeous woman, but what people, the standards that people try to get for her makeup is what she's already ascertained to. So to then now jump on the bandwagon and be like, oh, I don't really wear makeup, as it maybe to say like, you know, I'm better or I'm trying to make a power. I'm tr sorry, I'm trying to send a message to people to follow I think that's a facade and you do find a lot of people who do do that I'm going more natural with my makeup yeah because you've had everything done underneath the sun and now you feel like you want to pass it off as I'm just going a bit more natural now it's like getting a boob job and saying I'm not going to wear a bra bra no shit Sherlock of course you're not going to wear a bra your teeth are standing up look ah uh, I want to say Alicia Keys has allegedly had Plastic surgery. I, I I don't know if that's a fact. <laughs> I've studied it. I've studied that face structure. I'm telling you. I'm just saying it's a legend. It's a legend. What I want to read a quote that I that I saw. It said, "Everything is empowering, and everything else is shaming." Is a convenient narrative for the beauty industry, and basically it was saying that oh, we can everything now for women. I no everything now. Let me talk about myself as a woman catered to me as a woman in terms of changing my appearance, the way I look, my hair, my body, all this, it's all empowering now. And to say anything against it would be like, oh, now you're shaming. For me to say, actually, you know, why do we need to wear the whole makeup counter? Don't shame people if they found it empowering. Do you know what I mean? And this is from somebody, this was on a blog post and the person was saying they were selling eye makeup 
or like an eye rejuvenation for like dark circles and they were going to put on the packaging or at the site where they were selling it, you would need to probably stop smoking because if you smoke while you're taking this, it's not going to have the effects and actually it's, it will probably hurt you even more because um, your skin won't be able to rejuvenate because of smoke and then it could be quite dangerous because of the, pro the chemicals that are in the substance. And they said, don't take that out. You're going to make people feel bad for smoking. Um, and it needs to be empowering. And I think, I think this is the thing that I struggle with. And I, when I read this, it really spoke to me because I think we're told everything. If it makes you feel good, then it's fine. Whatever makes you feel good, makes you feel fine. If you feel like your best self, then that's completely fine. And no, we're not, it seems like we're getting into a place now, if there is legitimate, I believe, critique about something, then it's just like, well, if it makes somebody feel good, then what's the issue? And I think makeup, Spanx, all this stuff, and I wear Spanx sometimes, again, I'm, but I'm just saying, when I've sat and thought about it myself, these are things that are telling us that within a product, I can find something that is lacking, either within myself, or against the beauty standard that I've been told is the norm. So if my stomach isn't as flat as I want, then I can have something to, I saw Adrian, Adrian, no, Adrian Houghton or previously Adrian Bailon, who was on the reel. And she yeah. was going to have this non-invasive treatment that would basically is giving you like 3000 worths of sit-ups. So she was saying she's getting her hot girl summer on because this thing will give you abs. And people were saying under this, why do you need it? She was just like, she hasn't got time to go to the gym. She hasn't got time to do all those abs. And this machine is going to give her abs and she's going to have a hot girl stomach and she's going to have the abs she always wanted. I'm just like, and I'm sure if anyone critiqued it, they'd be like, it's empowering for her. What's wrong with that? If she wants to do it and it makes her feel good. But I'm like, where is the notion that you need to have abs? Where is that coming from? Where is it that you need to have this hot girl? And who has defined what this hot girl summer body is? And my thing is, it's all these things that it's surrounding, like, I must cover up my skin because I've got, you know, I've got acne or whatever, because, because we don't really see people represented who have bad skin on TV. So then we see, feel like it's against the norm, that like it's not natural or it's not right or it's not attractive. And but you don't think that, that that's changing. You don't think that you're seeing models like Winnie Harlow and you're seeing people like models who are being a lot more inclusive. You don't think that that's changing. Winnie, I don't think we see any models who have bad skin in terms of like acne. Ken no, I don't. I think Winnie, Kendall Winnie Jenner Harlow doesn't have good skin. And she's come out who? and spoken about that. Kendall Jenner, she doesn't have good skin. And she's come out I, a lot. In about one of the advertising campaigns. In one of the advertising campaigns. Winnie Harlow is different. She has a skin condition. And now they like it because they like something that's different. And I think Winnie Harlow is very attractive. But I'm talking about acne. And I shouldn't even call it bad skin. And that, for me, even that is judgmental. Skin that is blemish free. Like we don't see these things. And then we're told that if you have it, then it's something you need to cover up. Like, and I have friends who have acne who feel that way, who feel like they're not good looking enough to go out or to be with somebody or they need to cover up with several layers of makeup or like have felt like they want to stay in the house because they're having a breakout. And I'm like, these are things based on the fact that the way that I am isn't good enough. This is my, this isn't perfect. This isn't flawless. Like I'm not meeting the standard of this imaginary standard that we've been given. And therefore I need to change something about myself rather than just me being in this body, in this imperfect body, in this imperfect skin <laughs> is just enough because I am just present. I'm here. And I think that the beauty industry is trying to mess with that and saying that there is a better way that we can exist in the world outside of how we are naturally. I do agree that there is definitely some discrepancies within the beauty industry that have to be addressed. Absolutely, 100%. But I just think to come at makeup only, which seems to be people's problem is when it comes to makeup. And to, I want to know, where did we get these facts and figures from? Like, which women did we go out and have on these questionnaires and ask them, okay, why do you wear makeup? Why did you wear makeup today? Instead of amplifying something that's a general comment, where did we ask women these things? Because I just will give an example to me. I don't really wear makeup. If somebody made the assumption that I wore weave because I don't like my natural hair, I'd be like, get an F out of my face because who told you that? That assumption is incorrect. If that's what you believe, don't insult, don't inflict that onto me That because that we don't, you don't speak for everyone. And I think it's the same when it comes to makeup. There are women I, who I've experienced, I don't think I know, you know the most on here, but having been the advice that people come to for makeup, 
I've had women who've, who've had acne and said, yes, it's something that they're insecure about. I've had someone who said, I don't care. I've seen, I've seen a bit of, I've seen people have pigmentation. They don't care. Some do, some don't. But I think it can be quite confusing for there to be this generalized idea that you feel like is forced down your throat. And now you almost have to kind of like battle people. Like I don't actually wear makeup because I feel insecure about myself, even though there might be some people who do, I don't actually feel like that. And then you almost feel like maybe you need to kind of give into that example. Like, yeah, no, maybe you're right. Maybe when I was younger, I was bullied and I didn't really think about it right now, but I, I do now. I, I don't know how I feel about that. I think everyone's individual and everyone has like their own relationship with it. And it just seems to be this general idea that keeps being perpetuated. Do you have anything to say, Lucy? Because I have something to say, but come in. <laughs> right, if you, um, I mean, no, I, I mean, I do actually agree with Mona, to be honest. Like, I think that the beauty industry has changed uh, like, on that point. Like, I think you see, like, coming back to what you were saying about Kendall Jenner, for example, um, I think you do see models who are imperfect, imperfect now. And um, just in terms of, like, how... I guess this is more of a general point, but I do think that just in terms of how beauty is used or seen as a tool, um, that's definitely, definitely changed. And I think for me, the way that I've kind of seen that the most or has been, I guess, like the proof in the pudding is knowing men who use makeup now. So like you were saying before, Mona, like, but in my own kind of life, actually knowing guys who use foundation, who wear eyeliner, who completely experiment with their faces and you know really into kind of using them as a canvas a lot of the people I live with in the commune you know are very um I mean you know sometimes they look insane but like a lot of the time um you know these days are getting better and like they're very into using like making themselves look mad you know they'll draw like other eyes onto the I know I'm not just selling this place but um you know they'll draw like other eyes or like under their own eyes or like one of them was doing boy george's makeup the other day at wembley and like you know he came back and was so inspired by the makeup he'd seen and kind of done there he 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 took that look upon himself so that to me that kind of normalization of male makeup is the proof that actually makeup is no longer just about um a certain ideal yeah, I no, I just disagree with I disagree, ladies. I think we're on we're on separate sides of the coin today. And I just feel if if it was just I can understand what we're saying now in the 21st century where it has now become more acceptable for men. Um, and I think that some of that has been breaking down the barriers of what gender is and what gender isn't, which for a lot a lot of the different areas I think is very necessary and very needed. But I also think in terms of saying that, oh, it's just something that some women want to do, like, yeah, I think we've gotten that from somewhere. Like, I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say we can ever get around that, in my opinion. I read in the article, they said every other woman wears makeup. That's insane. They said this, um, one in six women wear makeup to the gym, which is actually so anti-productive for your pores and for your skin. And for me to say that because someone wants to do that, oh, because they just really like to experiment. And that I, I, I don't know. And I think if if it was just so normal and natural and things that we we would want to do, like men have only, men have been wearing makeup, not the, the vast majority, but I think it's because it hasn't been sold to them as something that is for them up until recently. And it's not even because just because of gender norms it's because the people have seen that there's a market there that they can cater to mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're, they're like there is consumerism behind that so I don't think it's just because women want to I think for decades for years for centuries women have been wearing makeup and we've been told that this is something that makes you much more feminine and attractive and I don't think we can ever get away from saying it's just something that I've naturally woken up to do because I just feel like I really like makeup I don't believe that I think I think it goes part and parcel with saying that this is what makes up a woman and we can either accept that and reject it or do whatever we want to do with it. But I completely I just... agree with you. I do think that the beauty industry is something that is actually quite ugly, but I don't just think it's only makeup. It comes under an amalgamation of things. And I think that even though that's where it started from, which is right, it did based on, you know, cap capitalising on women's insecurities. I do think that people have been able to change that narrative and have their own personal relationship with makeup why they do it and what it means to them my last question for you two ladies is if you wear makeup why do you choose to wear makeup what is your reasoning behind it 
You know what, yeah, I wish, as I said earlier, like I wish I knew how to properly do my makeup, but I do actually, even in lockdowns, I was wearing foundation and concealer every day and mascara and I left my eyeliner in the commune, but I would usually wear it too. But I don't use it heavily, but I feel like for me, it's the same way that even if I'm not doing anything in my house, I'll still get dressed in an outfit I want to wear. Like, I think it comes back to this, um, this thing of like having an identity. I wake up in the morning and think, okay, like, who do I, not who do I want to be, but what kind of idea do I have of how my day is going to go and who do I want, what kind of aesthetic do I want to inhabit to fulfill what I would need to complete or do or feel or experience in this day. And for me, that's like one of the most fun elements of every single morning when I wake up. And so the reason I wear makeup is part of that because I don't think it comes from insecurity because I wear it even if nobody sees me. Um, I think it just comes from just trying to complete like a specific look, which kind of sets me up for the rest of the day. And just, um, yeah, because I find it, I find it fun. I genuinely don't think it's anything um, more, anything deeper than that. I started wearing makeup in my 20s, mid to late 20s, because I became really conscious that I felt like I had dark circles under my eyes. I don't even know if I do, but I think it is slightly darker. And then I started wearing it and it just started building onto more and more and more. And I think I've be become very conscious recently about making sure that I'm not relying on makeup. Like I don't really wear makeup during the week. Um, <laughs> to, to be honest, especially if I'm not going nowhere, like I don't like to waste money. And I feel like it's wasting money putting products on my face that I'm just going to sit in my yard and touch my face and get sweaty and this and that. I'm not going to do it. I wear makeup because I think I like, and this is a problematic statement in itself, and that's why I think I'm talking from personal experience and what I've seen. I like the way it kind of gives me an even like tone and not even tone, but an even colour right the way across. And I think that's problematic because I think definitely we are told or seen or shown when we talk about Kendall Jenner, we can talk about the acne she suffers with in private, but we don't see it in, in campaigns. We see people with even skin tones um, and, you know, like it's one shade right across the face. That's the look that they're going for. So I think I've definitely bought into that in terms of makeup. Um, but I am maybe not as equally, but I am very comfortable in my own skin as well. So I think people wear it for a variety of reasons. I'm really talking about the roots of where it comes from. And I think, yeah, it's now saying it's empowering. I think that's another narrative that we're being told to sell us more makeup. That's my opinion. We've talked a lot about this, guys, and I have to bring this show to an end. So I have to say thank you for watching and listening to another episode of Ethnically Speaking. But this is the part where you get to add in your voice because we couldn't even come to a conclusion. Do you think a woman can wear too much makeup? And do you think that we've gotten to a place where, you know, makeup is just for, for yourself now? Do you think we've gotten away from saying it's fixing something within yourselves? Let us know your answers down below in the comments. And if you want a summary of everything we've talked about today, as always, head on over to unitedmelaningroup.com forward slash ES082. The link will be in the description. If you've been watching us on YouTube, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a single thing. Ethnically Speaking is going to be back on Friday with a brand new episode, but until then, wear your mask, wash your hands, keep your distance, stay safe, we'll be seeing you very soon.